and welcome all for the one-time showing of the 2015 Quench Sports Preliminary Wide Receiver Rankings. My name is Nick Walters and I will be your guide in today's tour of the best receiving options for your fantasy football team this year. To commence these July rankings and to open up the first tier, let's start off with the number one option, the most electrifying, dominating force in the NFL, a receiver, at this moment, throwing up the X, Dez Bryant. With DeMarco Murray's departure, Dez's numbers figure to skyrocket. Former extremely pass-happy offensive coordinator Scott Linehan will be made to return to his own ways and chunk the ball. And with MVP candidate Tony Rowe behind the best offensive line in football, Dez has zero competition to be the best receiver in Dallas. No matter in or out of the red zone, Bryant will toast defenders and leave them in the dust. Whether his contract negotiations come up short or not, Bryant in the middle of his prime will be poised for a monstrous year in the Big D. At two, how about Calvin Johnson? In 2014, Calvin was a disappointment. His injury-riddled season clouded up a potentially successful opportunity, but now Calvin is in tip-top shape and is looking to retake the throne as the National Football League's best wideout. In an offense coordinated by Joe Lombardi, Sean Payton's apprentice during the best years of Drew Brees' career, the Lions offense will look to sling the ball left and right, and the main beneficiary of that will be Megatron. At number three, we go to Atlanta for the Falcons' Julio Jones. With the new offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan making his way to Atlanta, Julio will thrive as the most utilized position in Shanahan's scheme, the X receiver. With Roddy White's career in its twilight stage and Matt Ryan still being a very generous and accurate pocket passer, watch for a the breakout year from Julio that we all know that he's physically capable of, barring more injury issues with his foot. And to close out the first tier, at number four, I'm giving you Jordy Nelson. At times in 2014, Jordy looked unstoppable. He would take games over. Quick analysis, having incredible chemistry with the best quarterback in the game makes fantasy owners salivate. All that while he had an injured hip, which is now surgically repaired and ready to go. Jordan and his MVP quarterback Aaron Rodgers have the best timing of any receiving duo in the league. Whether it be the back shoulder throw, the deep ball, or a catch in traffic, no one can do it better than these guys. The Packers offense will be an absolute juggernaut this year, with plenty of targets to spread the ball to, but Jordy is simply Aaron's guy, and that earns him a spot in the first tier. Okay, time for tier two. I know the name you're looking for. I know you've been waiting for it. Supposed clear cut number one. Well, I got him at five, Antonio Brown. Sure, Brown is talented, he is an excellent route runner with terrific ball skills and instincts. But standing at 5'10", he just does not have the size. In an offense led by Ben Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown could succeed like he did last year. I'm just not counting on it. Le'Veon Bell figures to get even more touches this year, including dump offs out of the backfield. Martavius Bryan and even Heath Miller are looking to be the go-to guys in the red zone. While Brown it will gain most of the defense's attention, the other Steeler targets will get passed to. Antonio, as always, will garner yards and yards and yards, but his lack of red zone effectiveness this coming year could very well cap Antonio's ceiling. At number six, DT, Demarius Thomas, Peyton Manning's number one target. While it's easy to get all giddy all over De Demarius because of Julius Thomas' departure, Watch out! Gary Kubiak's run-heavy scheme is now in place in Denver, and Peyton Manning showed severe aggression last year, not to mention Denver's offensive line deteriorating with Ryan Clady's ACL tear. Demarius has crazy upside due to his size, talent, and historically great quarterback, but Demarius's production could be damaged due to his system and situation. And next, at seven, the man we'll be seeing on the Madden cover, 
the man who has had one regular season play, shown in repeated more times in one offseason than anyone we've ever seen, Odell Beckham Jr. This guy is a freak of nature. He really could be Spider-Man, with his hand capturing anything coming near it like glue. Not even guys with stick'em could do the things Odell does. He uplifted a past lenient offense and helped make Eli Manning be the number two fantasy quarterback after week 10. But in 2015, things could be a little different. With Victor Cruz returning, receiving specialist Shane Vereen coming from New England in free agency, along with talented Ruben Randall and Larry Donnell still in New York, there may be too many mouths to be fed. On top of that, Odell's hamstring is already acting up during camp, and defenses will be keen on Odell to ensure he doesn't burn every coverage put in front of him, like last year. Don't be surprised to see a minor sophomore slump here. Even with this doubt and the dreaded Madden curse looming, his upside in talent is too great to have him any lower. And to wrap up the second tier, now the man in Chicago, Alshon Jeffrey. As Brandon Marshall signs with the Jets and John Fox brings his offense over from Denver, Alshon's stock went way up. In an offense that utilizes the X receiver well and often, Alshon finally has the opportunity to shine. Competing with only Eddie Royal from San Diego and rookie Kevin White, Alshon Jeffrey is due for a big season in 2015. And yes, even with Jay Cutler throwing it to him. To start off tier three with a bang, I got a ridiculously talented receiver in prime position to explode in 2015, as he will be utilized in one of the most dominant, past prominent offenses in the league, with a Hall of Fame quarterback getting him the ball countless times. That man is Brandon Cooks. In a New Orleans Saints offense, which let go of Jimmy Graham and Kenny Stills, Cooks is now the centerpiece of an offense that still loves to pass. Being an athletic freak will allow Cooks to do anything he likes in free space this season, gaining a ludicrous amount of yards while maintaining the athleticism to make the plays in the red zone, even at just 5'10". With only veteran Marcus Colson, inexperienced tight end Josh Hill, and an inconsistent, ball-dropping Nick Toon, as competition for targets from one of the NFL's elite quarterbacks, Drew Brees, while sporting a much improved offensive line, Cooks is in line for a huge breakout year. Now, at 10, I have AJ Green. The versatile and extremely talented Bengal is healthy and a fantastic option, but in a crowded receiving core with a healthy Marvin Jones, Tyler Eifert, and Mohamed Sanu, and Giovanni Bernard out of the backfield. And under Hugh Jackson's run-heavy offensive scheme, Green's upside isn't all too great. Oh yeah, and also, Andy Dalton is his quarterback. Not too exciting. Speaking of exciting, let's get to 11, where I have Randall Cobb, another Green Bay receiver. Cobb's versatility in the NFL's best offense cannot be underestimated. Whether it's lining up as a running back, returning kicks, or running screens, Cobb will get the ball a ton, including in the red zone, where he especially thrived last year. In such a crowded offense, Cobb's ceiling will be capped, but he will be more reliable than others in our list because of the assurance of Aaron Rodgers being his quarterback each and every game. At 13, we got Kelvin Benjamin. In Carolina, superstar quarterback Cam Newton has a physical phenom on his hands with Benjamin and will be sure to utilize him. Kelvin will look to ride his momentum from an already strong rookie campaign en route to an even better sophomore season with a healthier and improved quarterback. At 14, DeAndre Hopkins. The Texans have a very special talent here with Hopkins. Top end speed combined with intimidating size creates mismatches with most corners put in front of Hopkins. But even still, the Texans lack of a strong quarterback will hurt Hopkins. Whether it's Brian Hoyer or Brian Mallett under center, the Texans will be running a ton. There's still opportunity for a breakout, but safety will not be existent. 
for Hopkins Fantasy Owners. At 14, we have the Colts' best receiving option, T.Y. Hilton. A speedster in the Colts' juggernaut offense led by Andrew Luck, Hilton is a fantastic option, but a boomer bust one. Hilton has never been able to lean on his red zone production, so hoping for deep passes and breakaway runs in open space will be the name of the game for Hilton owners in 2015. But at 15, making the leap from a disappointing 2014 season for the Texans, the newest Indianapolis Colt, across the field from T.Y. Hilton, Andre Johnson. As a first ballot future Hall of Famer, Andre Johnson certainly has the credentials to get the job done. Reports have already coming out that star quarterback Andrew Luck is already connecting with the Andre Johnson extremely well and it looks as if Andre has wound back the clock and is performing like he did in his glory days. Playing with the best quarterback he's ever been assembled with and figuring to be an every play receiver for the Colts fast paced pass happy offense, Andre Johnson could be an absolute steal with unlimited ceiling. Age and injury history may be concerns for Johnson, but they're ignorable to have this guy on your fantasy team for a great price. And now, since it's only the shorter July version of the Quench Sports Rankings, it's time to speed things up. At 16, starting the fourth tier, I got Mike Evans. With Jameis Winston taking over the helm in Tampa, and with bounds of talent in only his second year, Evans has a great deal of upside in an offense that will try to find him the ball. Vincent Jackson, Austin Safarian Jenkins, and Winston's lack of an NFL experience make me hesitate on Evans' true potential at his current value, though. At 17, Keenan Allen. After a serious sophomore slump, where he was outplayed by Eddie Royal and Antonio Gates while being shut down by talented cornerbacks, Keenan looks to bounce back as a faster, bigger, number one option in an offense that now excludes Royal and is missing Gates for four games, and one that is led by the always solid Phillip Rivers. At 18, one of the biggest breakout candidates of the year, Allen Robinson. Never heard of him? That's okay. He's about to be a household name. Robinson is a tall, lanky, explosive, mind-blowingly athletic receiver in Jacksonville and has held rave reviews all across the league during OTAs. He's been deemed unstoppable, and you need to take notice. On a team that figures to be passing a ton, Robinson will get more opportunities than anybody. Cecil Shorts is in Houston, Marquise Lee is always in the training room, and Alan Hearns is Alan Hearns. Now at 19, Emmanuel Sanders. With Peyton Manning being Peyton Manning, Sanders will figure to see his production be steady, even in a run-favoring scheme, and not having Julius Thomas to spread the field for Sanders. At 20, I have one of, if not the biggest sleeper in fantasy football this year. Marcus Colston. As I alluded to earlier when talking about Brandon Cooks, the Saints receiving core is dry. That means more opportunities for others. Sean Payton has come out and said that their scheme will not be changing and they will still have Drew Brees aired out all game long. Colson is Brees' most dependable option and has been for years. Even with Graham in New Orleans, Colson would still garner crazy high target totals and, in hand, touchdowns. This year, Colson will be in line for plenty of looks from Brees. Their connection being rejuvenated will be a key element for success for New Orleans. So look for Marcus, or in other words, Quiet Storm, to step up and become a stupendous fantasy option like he's been for years past. At 21, I have Jerry Mack. Now in Kansas City, or in other words, wide receiver wasteland, Macklin's fantasy outlook may seem bleak. But reuniting with Andy Reid has been a seamless process for Macklin as he has already gained great trust and chemistry with quarterback Alex Smith. Look for him to be a solid wide receiver too, with tight end Travis Kelsey being a true star in that offense this year. Taking the 22 spot, I have Steve Smith. Everyone is writing off Steve Smith. Yes, he is very old at age 36, but as he proved last year in a run-heavy offense led by Gary Kubiak, Smith still has plenty of gas in the tank. 
he cannot be contained and still possesses one of the greatest stiff arms in the game. Now with past loving offensive coordinator Mark Trestman, or as he's nicknamed, the quarterback whisperer, and an efficient Joe Flacco still throwing him the ball as the true wide receiver one in Baltimore, Steve Smith will prove he is the man and a solid starting receiver for your roster. Next up at 23, I have Smith's newest teammate, Brashad Perry. Unlike what many other people will think, Perryman has the best situation to succeed this year. The Ravens' first rounder is in competition for the wide receiver two position in Baltimore. But when he wins the job, he will be the X receiver in Mark Tressman's abundantly passing system and will have the speed and size to beat just about anybody he goes up against this season. With the 24th ranked player, as mentioned before, Brandon Marshall. Once one of the kings of fantasy wideouts, B. Marsh is now a Jet and catching balls from probable draft bust Geno Smith. Although the highly talented receiver's statistical success throughout his career is undeniable, Brandon Marshall will not have this upside he has always had. This offense will not cut it for him. But at the 24th spot in our rankings, Marshall is still a reasonable option as a shabby wide receiver too, or a solid flex play. Now to end this already eventful fourth tier, one more surprise. At 25, Devontae Adams. This man has been making headlines all spring. From the video of the crazy 360 through the legs dunk he performed, to being the MVP of the Packers OTAs in minicamp, Adams is set up beautifully for 2015. As a physically imposing, naturally gifted freak, who obliterated comp competition at Fresno State, Adams has been highly acclaimed everywhere. Even by the reigning NFL MVP, Rodgers went on record saying that Devontae was starting to reach for his humongous upside. Rodgers went on to say Devontae is a very polished player, and he has an excellent demeanor for a guy who's going to be a star. Adams, who will be on the field plenty enough to make his share fair of plays, could be set to erupt especially if an injury occurred with Jordy Nelson or Randall Cobb. Now that we're in the fifth tier, rapid fire time. At 26, I got Amari Cooper. 27, Sammy Watkins. 28, Jordan Matthews. 29, Vincent Jackson. 30, Julian Edelman. 31, Brandon LaFell. 32, Deshaun Jackson. 33, Pierre Garçon. 34, Golden Tate. 35, Roddy White. 36, Anquan Bolden. 37, Torrey Smith. 38, Nelson Aguilar. 39, Martavius Bryant. And 40, Larry Fitzgerald. And that does it for the July wide receiver rankings. I'm sure you have many things to spout off about, or maybe an inquiry for advice, or perhaps a question. For anything you'd like to know, comment below, or ask me on Twitter at Nick G. Walters, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Check out the rest of the preliminary rankings and take your first big steps towards your 2015 Fantasy Football Championship. Follow Quench Sports throughout the offseason and the NFL season for updates, analysis, news, and all things fantasy football. For Quench Sports, my name is Nick Walters. Thanks for watching. Good luck out there. Until next time, Quench on.